glands haven't been too well so it's restricted me in actually talking so i hope today is fine and we're going to move on before that it's free to subscribe to my youtube channel rusty Furman sas tv have a look at it pass it on to your mates and we're nearly at 10,000 <clears throat> in a, a short period of time in reality. When I say reality, I mean reality, not reality TV that isn't. But, you know, this is coming up shortly on another channel. But I'm going to get mine in first and let's see what happens. You can also keep an eye on what I'm doing, <clears throat> where I'm trying to head to. And the stories in lockdown, thousands and thousands and thousands have been watching it, Un unreal. I didn't expect it. It wasn't supposed to be that exciting. But however, you guys have done everything and I'll say thanks. <clears throat> the books that I've got out Go, 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 which is this one. And if you look closely, <clears throat> Jamie Bell on the front of my cover as a book tie in from the inspiration of the book that made the film Six Days, all about the embassy siege. Yeah, just when you thought it was done to death, it's come to life. Took 37 years to get onto the screen. But hey, it's there. So, not a bad effort. But <laughs> I have to say that the regiment, my life story, up until I left <clears throat> Tutu SAS in 1992, is all in this book. And obviously, you can read it. Thank you for the people who bought it. Lots and lots and lots. <clears throat> so that's that's good as well. Then, of course, this is done massively. The print. When it's signed. Iconic pictures. Rusty Furman, the man with no gloves. Actually now dubbed the most recognized hands in special forces history take a look the mink behind me bob in front and there's another seven of them behind absolutely never thought that would happen but it has all to do with the 40th anniversary and you guys are sort of um have got a real interest in that type of stuff so that goes on Go, go, go is inaudible and has been for some time. The regiment is now being looked at and will be inaudible <clears throat> quite shortly. And for those who are really interested, just nip onto my website, www.rusty-firmin.org forward slash shop or dot com and take a look. So there we go. From that, we're going to go straight into SAS Combat Survival, which in my day had three phases. The first phase was the training phase. We'll come on to that in a bit. The second, escape and evade. And the third phase, resistance to interrogation. All mentioned in 15 years in the regiment, my book, <clears throat> it's all there in more detail. So that was really the three phases. But let me just recap on what I did in 1977, because people are interested. I did my selection. Yeah, really hot, really tough, but passed. So if you have a look at that in itself, the body 
was run down after the first four weeks. Short break, um, whilst we were training, back in the UK, obviously everything was in the UK at this stage. And then <clears throat> after that, we did the jungle, which I've just recapped on all the jungle stuff that I can remember. And that one has gone down over the last couple of days really well. But what I'm trying to say is that the body that's been worn down, and I mean worn down, is now looking for yet another beating selection. Four weeks beasting over the hills, <clears throat> trying to make the times you don't know what exists. Move on, pass that, move on to the jungle. Exactly the same, bitten by all sorts of stuff. Carry on. People who know me know that's a fact. Because that actually happened. But now, combat survival and resistance to interrogation is different. If I failed, combat survival and resistance to interrogation, I'm back to my old unit and I wouldn't be here today speaking to you guys about what actually happened. That is fact. You know, there isn't a shortcut there. That is really what would happen. But it didn't. So this is lockdown and I hope to keep you guys engrossed. I hope that the subscribers keep inscribing <clears throat> all the way through. Because at the end of the day, there's an awful lot more to come. So, when we did our selection, the next part of it, which we're going on to now, <clears throat> is the bit where we're all worn down severely. And then we get joined or did get joined in those days by some of the NATO guys who wanted to be instructors in combat survival. No problem with that. And of course, other parts of the forces within the British Army, they wanted to join on the course as well, which they did. But they were all sparkling, pure. They hadn't been through what we'd been through. So to them, or to me at that time, it would have been a dream. Ah, here I am, fit, ready to go. Yeah, not quite. Fit, ready to go was always there. Actually, the body goes, hang on, what about me? So do you, you're coming with me. And that's how, it, you know, that's how it went. You can't leave things behind to achieve the goal. These guys were, um, some of them had beards, um, proper beards, um, because they were from the Navy and the likes. <clears throat> we have got thorns sticking out all over the place. Necks with pus, you know, they have been through it before they got to that stage. However, it's just a matter of getting on with it. And that's how I looked at it. Right there wrongly, but it got me through. Um, so what more can I say? The training is the first part I mentioned. Well, from seasoned instructors, you get the likes of the survival tips, the special uh, SOPs. Um, living off the land but that wasn't so much the exciting uh, part because the two that came after that the two parts that came after that were conducted in Wales a remote area in Wales we didn't know where it was going to be nobody told us but actually that's where we ended up and when we ended up there it was like back to Wales. Oh God, I did selection there, four weeks. 
now it's another part of Wales where you don't have any friends. The day I started combat survival proper, after the training, a bit of skinning of rabbits, a bit of basher building, this, that and the other. <clears throat> okay, living off the land, great. But when it goes back to Wales, I can tell you I stood up in, for those who don't know, go and get a look at it. I don't know what happens today. Actually, I don't keep um, tabs on that. But in my day, my underwear and my socks and my boots belong to me. Boots DMS, socks shredded, shreddies, underpants, they were mine. The rest were great. We had the battle dress trousers from the 1950s. For those who don't know, take a look. They need a shave before you ever wear them. But we wore them because that's what we were issued. You got your boots, you got your underwear. Then you got the shirt, the hairy shirt, for those who remember. The hairy Mary shirt, absolutely itched all the time. People used to get off work in the army because this thing give them the itches. That's what I had. Trousers, BD. Itchy shirt, definite. Then there's the great coat. Remember the big great coat? Mine had buttons missing, um, which you wore on top of the, the shirt, obviously. And the caps comforter. I'm giving you some instruction here to go and look at what it all means. It tells you in the book. But go and do some research on it and see how comfortable you'd feel in that type of crap. All held together with, you know, the bale of twine. We used to call it binder twine. That was my belt. I was paired up with Geordie, a lovely guy um, from the way up in the northeast. It was so lovely when he spoke to me, I couldn't understand him. That's why I thought it was great. Rusty can just do what he wants to do. And this <laughs> tremendous guy. But I was from the northwest, he was from the northeast. And the mere fact I couldn't understand him meant we weren't going to do a lot of fucking talking. Just what you need on an exercise like this. Not too much chit chat. Get on with it. Do the job. Try and pass. And then move on to the next phase. That was all that was in my head. And that's what I was going for. So. Once we were dropped off. Let's be honest. We all go out in the Bedfords. I can't remember how many. There must have been at least three or four, and people, us, um, let's call ourselves the students, were dropped off at different locations. Not one behind each other, but once you were dropped off, you were told where to go to, and if you didn't make that point, there wouldn't be an agent there to maybe give you a sandwich, a dry bit of bread. It wouldn't happen. So it was for real, as best you can in the UK. We didn't have any friends because the areas that we were working in in Wales were, you go outside the area and get caught, you binned off. You stay in the area and then you have to fight the elements. You fight the hunter force, come on to find the dogs but your main aim is to get to your agent and get your next RV rendezvous point so me and Jory made a chat about it as you do Chinese Parliament um, and then we just decided that you know what we'll do it our way we're gonna move at night through the day, we can lay up. One of us can have a few winks, sleep. 
the other one would keep an eye open, hopefully. So now you're down to buddy-buddy systems. And because it's that way, it's strange. Because I have to rely totally on somebody that I'm working with. I don't know that well. And he has to do the same with me. So imagine. The days were going to be long. Wet and cold. It wasn't summer anymore. We had to look at what we were going to do. How we were going to do it. Nobody in the right mind would sort of walk through the daytime and risk being compromised because on top of all that, all the farmers in that area were briefed and of course they were hostile, but we were in their environment. So whatever they saw, whatever they, they could pass on to the camp, the camp would alert the DS, the DS would go and find out what's going on. So we didn't have an escape route. Apart from living off that and living off where your legs are going to take you. Sounds easy. But it's not quite that easy. Because there are people looking for you. There's a hunter force out. And I think... I think it was the Gurkhas, they had the dogs, supposedly we never had a chance, but we were on the ground, going from A to B to C to D, meeting agents, as you would do, maybe if you were on the run. You had a procedure to follow, you had agent contact drills, how it would work. They would answer you with a, you would get a passcode or a pass name. They'd give you a, a reply and that's how it went. If you're really good, you got a sandwich. Sometimes you got two sandwiches. But that would be to share between 12 blokes. I'm joking. But you know what I'm trying to say? That is how it worked in my day. What you see now, is if I was to believe that, I'd go back and pass selection at my age now, without even blinking. Another story, as they say. So, the layup positions, as they call them, would be through the day, hide away, try and sneak, and then move, last light till first light. I think you'll understand that it's never, ever going to dry out. We didn't have waterproof kit. We didn't have magic Gore-Tex boots that don't get wet. What I relied on, and I know you're going to love this, is one thing. Skin is waterproof. Don't ever forget that. What you've got on there, 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 arguably is or isn't. But you know what? You have a bath. You don't drown. Skin is waterproof. And I've cracked so many people up when I say that. I've seen them on Dartmoor where I'm walking. They've got all this fancy kit on and they they say, you know, you got your dogs you've got this. Yeah. The the minute I say skin is waterproof, they just die a death. Because it is. Think about it. <clears throat> so we had that factor. What I'll do now we've got to that point i'd like to get you back tomorrow because tomorrow i'd like to crack the end of this and resistance to interrogation okay because that's on channel four and see how they react to what i've just told you some 
so far. I've done it for real. These guys are doing it for a TV program. So tomorrow, I'm going to probably do a couple of these tomorrow. Lucky to watch them. Catch up. And then we'll look at hitting bank holiday Monday and see if it all works out well. I don't see why not. They can pretend, I can tell you facts. The most important thing is that you guys have to decide who you believe or what you want to believe. Remember, we didn't have social media in my day. That is what you lived off. And experience and the quality of instructor that was telling you stuff that you wanted to listen to. Not being bawled at like a recruit. Never happened. That's why people understand. You tell me something, I want to learn. Years to come, I can pass that on to people. I didn't know it was going to happen like this. And for those who think I'm wrong, you have perfectly open choice to say what you want, and I will listen. But there isn't anybody, not one person alive, having spent 27 years in the British Army since age 15, it's going to tell me something that somebody who spent five minutes, in reality, and most of it probably in the naffy queue, is going to change my outlook on this. Nobody. And tomorrow, I'm going to maybe share to you an email, which I had, if go back to Operation Mercado, I had an email yesterday of a really nice guy who was one of the super Etendard pilots, one of ten, that we were going to chase. And he sent me the most brilliant email yesterday, but I will ask him if it's okay to share it or share part of it, because he was the guys who were going out to get rid of in Tierra del Fuego in Argentina. What a lovely guy. He doesn't live in Argentina at the moment. Slightly different story, but you know what? If we'd have had to escape and evade that day, I might not be able to tell you a story when you think about it. But once again, 38 years after the incident, he's watched the YouTube channels, he's watched them, and I will ask the question today because of the time difference, if it's okay to share it. And if it is, then I will share it. And it just shows you that back in 77 when I did this, In 82, I would have needed every bit of skill I was being taught to get away if I survived from Argentina into Chile. So I hope that opens up. Yeah, no gloves. I hope that opens up. And tomorrow, I'm looking forward to doing a couple tomorrow to let you have a look at. So thanks. Who dares wins? Bye for now.